EMAs certainly do a good job predicting future price action for being lagging indicators, huh? Away from the, so this is an origin line, that's the daily 89. When it's that far away and Bitcoin's hovering around here, it typically wants to bounce off this and go all the way up to, to the daily 89. All right, rock and roll. Now that we've gotten that move, which really wasn't a special call or anything, it's... It's simply the way that Bitcoin likes to play around with the master origin line, which we've been covering on this channel for quite some time since it's been flirting around uh, as the daily 89 is approaching. And so now that that move has happened, we can essentially from the three price paths that I gave yesterday in that one video, <clears throat> my main video from yesterday, we can um, X one out and then focus on two. So let's figure out the our options from here. What is it going to take and what will it look like if Bitcoin were to get above that daily 89, then use it as support for another pump, uh, perhaps well into the 50s, or if it the more common option is under this circumstance, origin line daily 89, is it going to bump its head and find a higher low or maybe form a, a lower low or retest the lows, which are all very common options. Let's dive into the chart and analyze. Let's go. I am on <clears throat> the 15 minute chart. However, I have up here the daily 89 EMA using this indicator up here. Uh, you can see it labeled MTF EMA. And it allows me to be on a different time frame. So 15 minute time frame. See that 15 minute behind there? It says 15, and this is the daily 89. So you got that very clean rejection. Now let me throw on the macro origin line here. And I would say from this point, it's very, very likely that Bitcoin will come close to or exactly test at bare minimum before another strong move up 41.3. That is the bottom of the point of control after getting a clean rejection coming down here. I would imagine 41.3 will be tested next. Will that be the ultimate higher low that we're looking for? I would have my doubts, and here is, it, it could be from a horizontal standpoint, but maybe not a structural standpoint. Let me show you what I mean. This, let me take off the macro range now that we see where the point of control is. This is the master origin line that goes back pretty much till uh, 2012, 2013, something to that effect. It is the most integral origin line, the most, uh, the one with the most price history on it out of any origin line throughout Bitcoin price history, these rising lines. And Every time that Bitcoin comes down to this, specifically down to it, not approaching it from the bottom, which really hasn't happened since 2010 or something. It's been above this line uh, for its whole lifetime uh, post-2011, I do believe. And if you want a quick uh, example of that, go ahead and take a quick peek here. Look at that. So this brighter one right here is the master origin line. You see that one? So since... 2013 sorry since 2013 it spent its lifetime above it with the exception of coronavirus which was a very scary time and that's the same line we're on right now and what we're doing is we're taking this purple line as price comes down to that origin line what are the interactions that price has with the purple line and the, uh, so all these cases right here essentially you know you might have a couple more here right here uh in yeah, so, so all those cases, what does it look like? And that, that's what we're doing more on a micro scale zoomed in over here for newer viewers. Let's go back into this and go to the daily chart. The reason why I mean, not the reason why, what I mean by structural uh, slash horizontal is if 41.3 for uh, were a, a horizontal lower high, but not a structural low high would be this. If it comes down here, and then gets another pump, maybe up to 50K and then comes down heavily, I would call that more of a structural higher low, uh, even though this level would be 43.5 because it spent more time going up and moved along the axis as this origin line is going up. Am I using that terminology correctly? Structural higher low versus like horizontal higher low? Probably not. Uh, to give you an idea though, if it were to come down here, then make a charge back up, I wouldn't count that as giving structural support to price uh, for the long term. Rather, it, price would likely have to come, you know, potentially go up and then make a firm higher low, perhaps at 44K sometime in April at this origin line. So what I'm fully expecting here is one of two things. 
I'm going to put the macro range back on here so we can have a little bit of guidance. This black triangle is formed. Everything under it is uh, under the origin line. So that master origin line is the basis of that, the, the long, uh, I guess, the long section of the long side of this triangle. 100% of time that this setup happens with the daily 89 plus the origin line, price comes back to touch the origin line. It is that simple. And sometimes it, it, it makes lower lows after it, okay? It's not the most common form though, but it does come back to check it. However, some of these fractals, if you take uh, the past price history and you lay, copy paste, put it on here, sometimes you can have a uh, price come up all the way to 54 and then hit that origin line way up here at 43. And that would be your first structural lower high that's going to support future price action. Okay, if Bitcoin in the next few days comes here and then goes on another pump, that higher low will not be essentially supporting price action as much or it won't. Yeah, the, the column of support would not be as hard as another retest of this. So I am definitely looking for a retest of this. <clears throat> now, with that in mind, let's take a look at what I think is going to happen uh, throughout. This is going to be more of a short term time uh, analysis. The the uh, the things that I'll be looking for in price action throughout the rest of this week. Before we get into that, make sure you follow me on Twitter. Close is better. This with the number two afterward. Close is better. This two frequent Bitcoin and cryptocurrency price analysis updates. And if you want to be able to turn on your microphone and camera and ask me questions directly and live, I have links to the discord community within the description section of all my videos. But if joining a community is not your thing, but you want exclusive content above and beyond what's offered on YouTube for free, go ahead and hit the join button below this video and another video pop up describing your options to you. All right, so now let's dive into these charts and figure out what the hell is going to happen next, or at least determine what are the most likely avenues from here. Before we do, make sure you hit the like button for me. It's going to help me continue making videos for you. Also, leave a random comment down below. I'm going to have a, a an a non important competition. I want to see uh, who leaves me the, my favorite uh, or the best random comment for the month. Last month was uh, I like soft eggs or, or no maybe just soft eggs or something. And uh, and then for new folks, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you select the hit the bell and select all alerts specifically because this is time sensitive info. Let's dive back into these charts. All right, with that in mind, point of control could form a baby higher low, essentially, but this will be your big mama higher low, the the um, <clears throat> the origin line right here. Both could happen or just one could happen. So let's find out, okay, maybe Bitcoin price skips the baby lower high and simply works its way down. Let me use a different tool here. Let me use the price path tool. Maybe works its way down to the origin line, wicks below, and then zooms back up. Something to that effect. And what that would mean is it puts its time in, as I'm expecting for the month of February, within the point of control box, and then early March makes that wick down and then zooms up uh, March slash or reestablishes its base in March and then uses April for a more bullish month. I see that as a strong potential of happening. <clears throat> also what could have so that that's a general <clears throat> just a general idea you can you know i can move these around and make it a little bit you know more variants of that but that's this this tag of the origin line is the main thing i'm looking for however bitcoin does have the habit of doing something much more bullish than that and then retesting this from yesterday, remember, it could, you know, use this as support, come back up, it'll probably scream past the daily nine with volume. If it gets above, it's going to fly above, which makes me think regardless of getting above or below, it's going to come back down and test uh, 40, uh, 41, three <clears throat> at least. And it's actually more likely to hit uh, maybe 30, uh, uh, what is it? 38 and a half or 39. Cause there's a Friday CME gap. And uh, historically it, it takes nine days or less for those to fill. Um, there are only a few unfilled gaps in Bitcoin price history. I would not expect that this will be an unfilled one, so it, it'll probably come back down here. Uh, I would say, w therefore, throughout this analysis, when I say the bottom of the point of control for 41.3, uh, that does have baked in <clears throat> a wick down to 39K. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that real quick. CME day. 
you could fill that by just hitting that wick, 40900 So it's only about $400 difference, I guess, 41.3 to 41.9. But you would wick past this to at least 40900 most likely to fill that gap. It, it is, it's very, very statistically likely to happen, and that is uh, baked into my analysis of 41.3. Just call it $40,900 um, at least, okay? All right, and then this next replay here, since uh, the initial move did not get above the daily 89 with volume, it's going to need to test this, likely wick down to 40000 900 and in the second case it would zoom up you would see the volume if you turn on your volume indicator it would zoom past without looking back it wouldn't even hesitate on a you know one hour candle it would zoom up and at least the next stop would be 40 uh 49k and when it zooms up that fast it'll probably wick past and hit something psychological uh, up there aka 50k um, and then perhaps even resettle uh, hit the daily 89, which is curving up, and then even try again, potentially, uh, which could take things up to 53. Therefore, let me make this a different color, and let's make it orange, and then I will draw out the daily 89 like this. Zooms past it, curves up, and that would be the extension of the daily 89. Take a look. See how it zooms past it, comes back, uses the 89 as support, and gives one more pump? These are the two more common ways that Bitcoin likes to behave around the 89 and the origin line. There is one more common way where it does another version of this but breaks down. Therefore, if this blue option right here, if this blue option is the one that starts formulating throughout the month of February and March, what we're going to have to do then is forget about this fractal, and then I would add a second fractal here, essentially an extension of this one from this point, which uses this as resistance and then heads down lower. And I would probably add a couple more, either retagging the lows or make lower lows, which are both possible. But as of now, because this test of the 89, I wanna stick with these as the top two most probable, now that we can kind of start sorting out with the probabilities. And if once this happens, uh, then we can obviously make this one not the most probable anymore. And then we can make the second most probable either a break uh, a breakdown of uh, from the origin line. And, uh, and again, <clears throat> Both of these cases right here, so the orange and the blue, both assume that February will be bullish at this time, even though this one, uh, it, it just plays around in the point of control, but that would still be a green month for February. And uh, if you want to zoom in on the lower time frames, what you might be looking for is price to generally... <clears throat> Price to generally stay above the one hour 200 EMA besides the wick down to test that CME gap. I would strongly expect that that's what's going to happen. Uh, let's put on the one hour 200 100 EMA. And guess where that is? Right at that CME gap. So this could happen fast, sooner than uh, later. Look at that. And usually in bullish moves, if you fly past, actually, it didn't fly past. Uh, let's zoom into that. This actually used it as support first. I, I missed that. I missed that. It came, and, and, and it simultaneously used the origin line as support. Came above, used it as support, and blasted off. But it was such a quick move that it was really hard to handle. You would have had to bend at your charts because there was nothing bullish about price uh, here. Um, this, the, Yeah, it all happened really fast, obviously. But uh, I could easily see that happening. So once you see the one hour 200 EMA hit, I strongly suggest you use that line. Uh, then you can start focusing on how good the bounce is and whether or not the bottom of the point of control or maybe even the middle of the point of control right around 42. If price is bumping its head using either one as resistance, the middle or the bottom, if it's using it as resistance, then you might start giving more statistical likelihood to, to a, um, a retest of the origin line down at 38K or so uh, happening sooner within February. Um, as opposed to happening later in April after a push up, uh, up and above the daily 89. So in summary, the two EMAs that you want to be looking at are the one hour 89 and then the daily, uh, no, I'm sorry, one hour 200 EMA and then the daily 89 uh, mixed with this origin line. And if you want, you know, instead of uh, uh, making an origin line throughout all of price history, which is pretty tough, what you could do here is you could connect a line from uh, as roughly the top, roughly the tops of post coronavirus. So this is coronavirus. 
This is May 2020 and August 2020. That connects uh, the roughly the tops there with the middle of this upward diagonal price action. See how it kind of splits price in the middle here? Uh, these candles, these daily candles were closing below the origin line. Just mix that. You're going to uh, very likely be looking for a retest uh, of this line either in February, March, or April. It's extremely likely to happen. And uh, using these uh, EMAs that I've spelled out here are going to help you stay on your toes and uh, be able to click around with your money more comfortably. Check out this video right here if you want to be able to set up a chart just like mine. It's a 28-minute trading view tutorial that I made for new folks in crypto. It'll help your journey drastically, especially if you're new. And catch this video right here if you want to see a fourth whale game trick play in February that would still end bullish February. And you just got timified worldwide. Peace.